All right, troop ten hut. Forward march. Do something. Welcome to Fort Irving. O'Rourke has a new money-making scheme, but this one is breathing. According to Army regulations, F Troop is allowed a mascot, right? Right. Which entitles us to an annual allowance of $100, right? Right. Now, how much can it cost for a meal for a goat? That depends on how healthy you want it to be. Your average goat really will eat just about anything that's ingestible, but that doesn't mean everything is good for it. You can feed her with leftovers from the mess. Or if she's fussy, tin can. Ahem. I knew this was coming. Contrary to popular myth, goats do not eat tin cans. If a goat smells something edible inside the can, he or she may chew at the can in an effort to access the nutrition contained within. But even a goat is not foolish enough to swallow metal. Right, we leave stuff like that to people trying to get views on TikTok. What has the sound of a clock to do with the current discussion? Look, I'm in the middle of filming, so I can't explain it right now. But you have friends. Call someone and ask them. Oh, oh, Barbara. Hey, Duffy. What do you think of our new mascot? Huh. You call that a mascot? When I was at the Alamo, we thought big, son. We wanted to get an elephant for a mascot. An elephant? You're dang tootin'. We wanted someone who would remember the Alamo. That is such a dumb joke, it makes me laugh every time. Captain Parmenter prepares to address his troops. <laughs> and prepares. <laughs> and prepares. Once his finger stops hurting, he tells the men they have a big assignment. A new explosive called dynamite has been developed, and they're getting a big shipment of it with instructions for how to use it. In fact, the wagon carrying it just broke down in front of the saloon, and Jane is none too happy about the whole thing. Do you know who the driver is? No, who? Private Leonard W. Starr. Oh, no! Rungo Star, the Jinx is back! We'll get a mini clip show about some of the things that happened the last time Rongo was here, but unlike a lot of such sequences, this one isn't overly long. It's time to go see about this shipment. Fellas, I'm sure glad you're here, because I want to apologize. I'm very sorry it happened. Sorry what happened? Well, that's just it. I don't know yet. Captain Parmenter is still on a mission to convince Private Star that he's not a Jinx. He orders Star and Dobbs to unload the wagon. I, no, 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 no. I get you just let me over. Oh. <laughs> Stuff like that happens a lot when he's around. I think the captain is a counterforce to his jinx, and that's how he caught the box before it could hit the ground and explode. Ahem. Why are you still here? It is indeed fortuitous that I am. Had that box struck the ground, two things would likely have happened. The box would have broken open, and the soldiers would have had to collect the spilled dynamite. I know. The entire development of dynamite revolved around the instability of nitroglycerin in its pure form. I know. However, when the nitroglycerin is mixed with the particular compounds found in dynamite, it becomes reasonably stable and requires... A blasting cap. I know. I've worked with it. And none of that has anything to do with the episode, so kindly refrain from indiscriminately inserting verbal pollution into my analysis of this cultural phenomenon. Uh, beg pardon? Pipe down. If this continues, something really bad is going to happen. They need help. Good luck charm show. We have all kinds of genuine Indian good luck charm. Made by all kinds of genuine Indians. They don't have anything that might deal with a jinx, but they do have a dance to ward off bad luck. Oh, isn't that wonderful, eh, Garn? Look, they got dances for everything. Dances to bring crops, dances to break up bad jinx, dances for rain.
In fact, they have so many, they sometimes get them mixed up. On May 13, F Troop will use the dynamite to blow up that section of the mountain known as Canyon Trail. Since the trail has been the route taken by roving bands of hostile Apache Indians while assaulting passing wagon trains. That would explain why there is so much of it. Captain Parmenter assigns Private Star to guard the dynamite. It's stored in the guardhouse. Nobody will so much as talk to him, but he finds a friend in Miss Gwendolyn. You all alone too, huh? Ah, uh, poor little thing. Tell you what, you come along with me to the ammunition shed and we'll have a good talk, friend to friend. Don't look like I have too many friends here around the fort. But once I had a friend, a good friend, and he wasn't afraid I'd jinx him. No, sir. And boy, did we have fun together. Rebuilding this house when it burned down. <laughs> The cannon shoots a hole in the water tower. Of course, the guard tower falls down. All things you expect to happen when Rongo Star is walking by chatting with a goat. And visiting the doctor when he broke his leg from the horse running over him the second time. <laughs> I do my best to be a faithful friend to the people I care about. This guy is so faithful, it's going to kill him. And send him for help when his canoe capsized. <laughs> Buying new cattle when the plague killed his herd. <laughs> now, Miss Gwendolyn... Don't go on in them crates no more. Believe me, that stuff could give you the cramps. The next line should be something like, and if you eat the dynamite, it could ruin your whole day. But the truth is, if she did eat some of the dynamite, the biggest threat would be the smell of her poop for the next few days. With a little brainstorming from Jane, Captain Parmenter decides this whole jinx thing is just happening because Private Star lacks confidence in himself. To help him, the captain is giving him a special assignment. He won't tell anyone else what it is. Hey, guard. There's a whole box of dynamite missing. Of course, they assume Miss Gwendolyn ate it, so she's a walking bomb. Or, more precisely, a running bomb, since she was going full speed when she headed out the gate. What's it say? Dear occupant, uh, Chief Wild Eagle died. Dying? He... Sarge! Miss Gwendolyn! Yeah. She exploded! If Gwendolyn had exploded by him, I don't think the message would say he's dying. I think it'd say he's died. <laughs> ah, Miss Gwendolyn, she didn't blow the place up. Listen, Chief, you got to get rid of that goat. Your life is in jeopardy. I know, but it's too late to help. Superstition just about to come true. Superstition? It's written that when white goat enter Hakawi camp during rainy season, a chief will die. There's nothing wrong with him. I expect him to lay there waiting to die for another 40 years or so. The Canyon Trail! Apache and Warpath! Did you hear that, sweetheart? Apaches! Hey, guard, let's alert the fort. Those Apaches are trouble. The Canyon Trail is the place they're supposed to blow up, but they're not scheduled to do it for another couple of days. They might want to move the appointment up a bit. Apaches are on the warpath at Canyon Trail. What? Did you say Canyon Trail, Sergeant? Apaches, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that's where Private Star is right now. His secret assignment was to go up there and plant the dynamite, which means he's up there alone and a whole band of Apaches is headed his way. Oh, oh them poor Indians. They won't stand a chance. <laughs> Private Star needs our help immediately. Yes, Sergeant. Assemble the troop. Yes, sir. Not to worry, Rongo. Your captain and troop will have your back. In the 1870s, a nightshirt like the captain is wearing was common, and I get that. I never understood the dopey hat. Ostensibly, it's supposed to be long enough to hang down the back of your neck and keep it warm, but every depiction any of us has ever seen has it dropping down the side of the guy's head like the captain's is doing, and serving no discernible purpose. It serves several purposes at various times in history, for example, in the days when England would hang people for just about anything, before a man went to the rope, he would supply a nightcap to the executioner. After the man finished his final prayers, the executioner would pull the cap down over the guy's face and do the deed. 
Isn't that a lovely association for a ridiculous looking piece of clothing? The fact that Captain Parmenter was ready to head into battle but forgot he was wearing it is fairly predictable. And to find him, all they have to do is follow Gwendolyn. She finds him with no trouble and he gets to work. There, Miss Gwendolyn, that's the last of the dynamite. Now all we have to do is wait for the rest of the truth. Huh? <laughs> There are times when bringing bad luck to someone else isn't necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> Case in point. Even bigger case in point. Here come the Apaches. Come on, Miss Gwendolyn, let's get out of here. That's the end of the Apaches, Captain. And a private star, too, I'm afraid. Don't count on it. <laughs> Captain, one minute of silence, please. <laughs> Rongo, you're alive. Yeah, I've always been. Crazy Cat rides up to report that Wild Eagle is also alive and in the best health he's been in years. So much for that superstition. Crazy Cat told me that the funeral for the Apache chief is tomorrow. <laughs> How do you like that old superstition coming true? White goat go to Hakawi camp, Indian chief die. It's just a good thing for us it wasn't Wild Eagle. Try telling that to Crazy Cat. Crazy Cat is in mourning over the loss of his elevation to chief. Rongo is off to his new assignment. Since they've already bonded, he'll be taking Gwendolyn with him. Now the jinx is broken. You sure, Captain? I'm positive. Next time, try making your corral railings out of pine, not balsa wood. <laughs> now, how did he know it was time to exercise the horses? If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time. Okay. Okay, okay. I need it. Where I can access it quickly. All right. Okay. Don't hit your hat, stupid. For pity's sake.